And Keynes himself called that sticky, Keynes called it, called it sticky wages. Wages don't adjust. Just like investment doesn't adjust. Once you start an investment project that is fallacious, it stays with the economy. So we're stuck with all of these politically based huge infrastructure projects which are, um, are just uh, bad for the economy because it crowds out decent investment, entrepreneurial investment, uh, creative entrepreneurial profit seeking uh, investment which is, enhances well-being. Um, okay, Keynes actually said what we should do is hire people, the government should hire people to dig ditches and then uh, cover up the ditches. That's a better, that's, that's, uh, that's actually a better idea than huge capital projects because at least then you're not stuck with bad investment over the long term. So that's, that's less cynical than, than you would think. Why don't we just hire uh, people to dig ditches and bury them over because then we wouldn't be stuck with bridges and roads to nowhere. Another, another problem with government jobs, job creations, like uh, the Works Progress Administration, the Great Depression, at one time 25%, during that 1935 to 1943, during the Works Pro Progress Administration, 25% of all American families, at one time or another, got their income from the, the Works Progress Administration. Um, the problem with government jobs is, is status quo bias. Okay? Once you have a job, you're more likely to stick with that job. So when times are bad, government hires people. When times are good, that just crowds out, uh, employee, uh, that just crowds out the ability for the private sector, the uh, innovative sector, to hire people because they're happy and comfortable with their government job. That's status, status quo bias. Uh, President-elect Obama wants to create 2.5 million jobs. 600,000 600, of those would be government jobs. So fallacy number one there is how, how can the government create private sector jobs? What, what can they do? Only by picking and choosing winners. And, and, and so 600, so the government can't create jobs. Only private employers can create jobs. Number one. Number two, 600,000 people working for the government, what, you know, the status quo bias, they're, they're unavailable for pro, pro, productive activities. Okay, and this, this government spending, what it does, it, it, it makes the down cycle worse and it makes the up cycle not as high as it would be. So what the government does, it just smooths out, uh, you know, change, change. <laughs> change is good, change is, is, is a human nature, right? So, uh, so that, that's another fallacy of fiscal stimulus and Fiscal stimulus has been accepted over the last 70 years. Mainstream politics, mainstream economics has been commonly accepted. And it, no one has questioned the underlying principles of liberty and prosperity of Keynesian economics. How did we get here to 70 years of Keynesian economics? There's epistemological and ontological problems. There's problems of, which is problems of learning and knowledge, okay? Experimental and evolutionary economics has shown that the ideal size, the ideal collective of human activity is 150 people. Originally, we were hunter-gatherer societies, 100, 150 people with acknowledged leaders. And uh, uh, another example of that is army platoons are 150 people. These are, these are personalized relationships and structures with no free riding involved because you, everything's personalized, a clear goal, a clear leader. Uh, okay, so 
that's what uh, experimental economics has shown. But now we have nation states, which have grown and grown, from to the United States from 10 million people to 300 million people. Uh, we have not kept up with that ontologically, mentally, in our ability to understand complex relationships. So people, out of fear and out of misunderstanding of complex systems and the inability to abstract reason uh, complex systems, have allowed this Keynesian economics and this government management of society to take place. Uh, that, that's just evolutionary. Uh, Jean-Jacques Rousseau is a French philosopher. He, he describes something called the general will and the general good. The general will is individu each individual in a society uh, able to achieve what they want. And the general good is when the societal structure itself is manifest in individuals acting out their general will. Um, when the general will does not equal the general good, there's a role for government. There's a role for some kind of collective action mechanism. So the left wing, or those people who think that government can help people, say that government allows the general will to equal the general good. Whereas libertarians believe, or individualists, or uh, people who understand complex systems and aren't afraid of them, understand that anything that gets in the way of the general will manifesting itself into the general good is a problem. So that's another um, philosophical problem with Keynesian economics and why, why we are where we are today. Again, this inability for uh, abstract reasoning uh, creates a fear of unknown and talking heads on television say, government needs to step in now, government steps, needs to step in now. Uh, this, this inequality between the general will, the general good, and the need for government to equate those is, is called a fallacy of composition. Um, uh, for example, and this fallacy of composition uh, manifests itself in something called the unintended consequences of government intervention. An example of this is the, uh, the bank holidays that Roosevelt called uh, in his first 100 days in office. There were many banks that were solvent, many banks that weren't solvent. Uh, a lot of that was due to regulation, which didn't allow banks to, to, di to diversify their risk. So Roosevelt called a bank holiday because he thought that that would alleviate the fear. Okay, of, of bank runs. Well, in fact, what that did was create more fear. It created fear. Oh, the government's closing the banks. There must be a problem. So th this is a, an example of the unintended consequence of government action. And it's, uh, it's the fallacy of composition. And so, so what, that, what that then created was people's dependency on government and the government's regulation and management of the banking sector. Okay? And that in turn created monopoly capitalism. Sorry to use a Marxist term at a libertarian. <laughs> it created monopoly capitalism. Marx called the government the executive committee of the bourgeoisie. So what you got was government management, centralized management, and, and non-competition in the banking sector where the government was in charge of the money, as it is today. And that's another fallacy of composition, this, this, this feeling or fear that government needs to control and manage our money. And without that, uh, we would have a crisis, when in fact, private insurance could handle it just as well. Any questions on that? Yeah, you said you 
said the private insurance. You're talking about the monetary system. You said private insurance can have the difference. Well, how could the private insurance have the monetary system? You're talking about the basis of trillions and trillions of dollars. How could any private company? Um,